I am a bit more of a creature of habit than I maybe wanted to believe that I am. So I was like thriving in a way from the adventure standpoint of life when we were digital nomading. I'm super enthralled by seeing a new place, by experiencing new cultures and people. And that part of me was living totally fulfilled. But the other, there's another side that's very professional oriented and wants to have a solid career and have my, and I'm very social. I like to have a core group of friends and, and also just little things like, you know, having a dedicated place to go work. This is Debbie and welcome to another episode of The Offbeat Life, where I speak to inspiring individuals who ditch the norm to become location independent. We'll learn how to create sustainable laptop lifestyles from the experts that will help us achieve freedom from our nine to five. All right, so we've been talking about landing a remote job for a while now, but the one thing you're probably most curious about is how to learn the online skills you need to land these jobs. I'm not just talking about getting a brief introduction, but learning from actual accredited schools so you can be taken seriously when you apply for these jobs. You've been waiting for a while, and I'm really sorry about that, but I have finally created a whole page listing the best courses to take from teaching English online to becoming a freelance writer and so much more, all from trusted sources that will get you that remote job. So if you're ready and serious to take the next step, then visit theoffbeatlife.com slash learn online skills to get started. Again, you can visit theoffbeatlife.com slash learn online skills to get started. On this episode, I speak with Chase, who is an American expat currently living in Spain. He's the head of business development at Duist, a leading remote first company and a contributor for some of the top remote work outlets like Remote How, Repeople, Future of Work, Workforce, and others. After calling a half a dozen countries home, Chase is passionate about making location independence the new norm and helping others step into a life beyond their borders via his podcast about abroad. So listen on to find out how Chase continues to be productive even while he's on the road. Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here. I am super excited because I am here with Chase. Hey Chase, how are you? Hey Debbie, I'm good. Thanks so much for having me. Great to meet you finally. I know. It's so nice to finally meet you, to talk to you, and to really learn more about you. So before we get to your entire journey, can you tell us a little bit more about you and why you live an offbeat life? Yeah, sure. Um, So I currently live in Spain. I'm from the US originally, and I am one of those people that just always had a desire to travel and, and live in other countries and just kind of thought when I graduated from college that that was sort of a a young person's game and that I wouldn't be able to do that. I had to go, of course, settle down, start the career, all of that. But I unfortunately or fortunately, I guess, couldn't shake the desire to just keep traveling and seeing other places. And so um, really decided that although I had a remote setup, I was geographically limited and I really had to shake it, shake that and find location independence. So I've been on a journey to do that ever since then and have am fortunate enough to have complete location independence and in, in the career that I love, but also getting to travel around the world with my wife and our Siberian Husky. And we live in Spain <laughs> currently, but spend a couple months out of the year traveling around in our camper van or, or elsewhere throughout Europe. That is pretty incredible. And I, I, I'm like, I'm like, there's so many things in my head right now. But the first thing I thought of was like, you have a dog and you can travel all over the world. <laughs> Like, how is it? Because I'm like, I've seen people, you know, travel with their kids. I'm like, how hard is that to travel with your dog? I'm sure it's a lot less troublesome. <laughs> you know, what's you know, it's funny. I joke because my brother has uh, two young kids and it's we we joke that it's the one time that I have it harder than him is when <laughs> it comes to traveling because it is not easy. And I will say, like, I think we were uh, we were more of like digital nomads for a couple years, but it got really exhausting and kind of like sucked the joy out of it, trying to move around with a big dog. So we we kind of like, as much as we wanted to keep seeing lots of new places, it became much more fun overall to sort of just be in a settled place, have your apartment and your place, you know, your place to call home and then kind of go off from there. So yeah, it's, it's not 
super easy, but <laughs> it's uh, well worth it. He's he's crisscrossed the Atlantic and the equator multiple times. Oh my gosh, that's a very well traveled dog. I'm like such a lucky dog, but <laughs> that's that's also really interesting that you find that traveling with him is harder than um, you know when your brother travels with his kids. I'm like I never would have thought that, but that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean you don't have to fill out customs forms and get vaccinated vaccinations and uh and time up Aww. meetings with the USDA when you're when you're traveling with your kids so that's the joke we have but no it's it's all well worth it in the end it's it's been a lot of fun like we're a little family and we've gotten to you know been able to see the world together which which is all well worth it of course that is awesome. So now one of the things that you also spoke about is that transition, right? You were a remote worker and then you became a digital nomad and now you wanted to have a place to kind of be your base. And a part of that decision was because of your dog. And it's so interesting because I've talked to a lot of digital nomads who transitioned to a place in their life where they did decide to have a base because it does get exhausting, right? So aside from obviously making sure that the dog is more comfortable, how did you come to that conclusion that you wanted something more different? Yeah, you know what I realized was like, I am a bit more of a creature of habit than I maybe wanted to believe that I am. So <laughs> I was I was like thriving in a way from the adventure standpoint of life when we were digital nomading. I, I'm super enthralled by seeing a new place, by experiencing new cultures and people. And that part of me was living totally fulfilled. But the other, there's another side that's very professional oriented and wants to have a, a solid career and have my, and I'm very social. I like to have a core group of friends and, and also just little things like, you know, having a dedicated place to go work and a gym to go to and kind of, so I'm, I'm a little bit more of a creature of habit than I think I wanted to believe at at one point. Yeah. And so I needed to I needed both sides to of the of that equation to thrive, I think. So that was what really led to it like I could have the best of both worlds if I if I have location independence, I can have those the routine aspects that help me thrive professionally and from a health standpoint and a social standpoint and then I can also have the, the you know get a good taste of adventure you know, by traveling a handful of months a year. And, and so I think it was, it was very calculated, but also like took place over a probably three or four year period to like really arrive to that point. It's really interesting when you think about it, because a lot of us want to leave our nine to five because of the routine, right? We want to get out of the monotony of waking up at the same time, not doing um, the things that we really want to do. But then like you, Chase, I came also to the same conclusion. Like, I actually like the routine. I like to have systems, but it's the systems that you create for yourself, not necessarily because other people are making you do it. So there is a difference to that. But creating habits are so important to succeeding and making sure that what you're doing is really valuable for that lifestyle that you want to do. But I do have to say, there are people that really love not having anything set. That. Like every day is so different. I don't know how they do that because I'm like a mess when that happens. But <laughs> I don't know about you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think I, something you touched on right there is like it's all about choice. And it's so cool. Yeah. I, like I love to see this kind of remote work movement that's happening. I do like the core of my day to day work is involved in that. And it's all about options and choice. So like if you are the kind of person that wants to have like wake up every morning and not know what your day looks like and not sure where you're going to be working from and you can thrive in that environment and if your employer allows that and says like yeah you can get your work done in that environment then you should have that option like you shouldn't be in this like rigid system of like okay well you have to show up at this office from nine to five because that's what we say but then also if you're that person that that needs that office and needs that structure and thrives in that environment you should have that option to you as well. And I, I feel like those options are becoming much more available. I don't know if you feel this way, Debbie, but like when I graduated from college, like that was totally, these, there were not really options. Like you just had to go for one route. And, and I love that it's becoming more of like, you know, you can tailor make your schedule where you live, how you work, um, all kind of to, to the type of lifestyle that you want to live and, and how you're the most like productive and the most happy. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with you on that one. I feel like 
the people like us, uh, Chase, who have been doing this for a few years, and I've talked to people who have been even doing this for like 10, 20 years, like working remotely, I'm like, oh my God, these people are the pioneers. And we're kind of, you know, we're still in that stage because like you said, we weren't taught how to handle this type of life when we were in school, right? Like you go to work, you go to your nine to five, you, you know, do all those things that you need to do and then you retire and nobody prepares you for this. And this is a completely different way of living. And it does take a while to really understand, to find your own groove of how you can make this work for you. So I think a lot of people go into this thinking that it's going to be easy, they're going to have a ton of freedom, but you have to understand that there's also a lot of responsibility that comes with that freedom uh, that sometimes can be a hindrance to to work, to to your life as well. Absolutely. I came across this like really interesting uh, discussion from this guy, his name's George Munford. He was like the mindfulness coach for Michael Jordan and other people like before mindfulness was a word that anybody knew. This guy's like kind of a genius. And he talked about this thing called the dizziness of choice, where it's like basically like how the more options you have available, how like you kind of become paralyzed. Like, I don't know, analysis paralysis might be another way to word it, but it really, he wasn't talking about digital nomads or, or remote work or anything, but, um, but it, it resonated with me because I was like, yeah, like when you when you have all the options in the world, you know, where are you going to live? What time are you going to work? Um, you, it can throw you for a loop and, and like, it's, it's a privilege and also like something you have to work at and not, not take it for granted. So I, I found that really interesting. Yeah. I, I think that's such a great way of, of saying that there is, it's, It is. It's a responsibility to put yourself in that position. That's why I think a lot of people maybe um, go into this and then they also find out that it's not right for them. Um, But I do have to say, because, Chase, you work for a company and this is, you know, you have a new job title now, right? Can you tell us more about that? That's really interesting. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, sure. I have a really uh, odd job title now that I that I'm still getting adjusted to. And but I'm absolutely thrilled about it. Uh, if you haven't noticed already, I, I'm a total nerd for talking about remote work and location independence. <laughs> and I and I work for a company called Doist, which is a software company. Where, but we're, what's a bit more interesting, I think, than what we do actually is, which is creating a couple apps. The one that we're most known for is Todoist, um, which is like a productivity app. And then we have another one called Twist, which is a team communication app. But we're a fully remote team and we have been for over a decade. We're around 100 people in 35 different countries and everybody spans all time zones. And we work very like asynchronously, meaning like we don't we don't care when people are working, where they're working from. Um, You know, you don't clock in. We don't expect immediate responses. We don't expect any of our teammates to be working at the same time necessarily. It's just it sounds very chaotic when you when it on the surface, but it actually works really, really well. And we've been very successful working this way for a long time. Um, but what's my new role is focused on is is basically that remote aspect, you know, really making sure that we're thriving in terms of the way that we work remotely. Um, so with the explosion of remote work, there's tons of new tools and technologies and best practices being shared. Um, there's, uh, there's emerging products and services that could serve us better. And we want to stay on the cutting edge of that. And then we also want to keep advocating for remote work to, to help it become the, uh, the rule, not the exception. We've, we've been a part of that for a long time. It's been important to us as a company, but now it's my full-time job to, uh, to, to kind of be on that bandwagon. So that's a dream for me because it's, <laughs> it, it's a lot of fun, but yeah, that's a, that's a little bit about the background of the role. Amazing. I mean, who knew that you can have a position like Chase in today's world. It's so funny. <laughs> I didn't. I, I, I didn't right? know. <laughs> uh, but, but now that I do, I'm, I'm happy. I mean, it, it, is, it is a lot of fun. I mean, how many people you, will you meet that have Chase's, you know, job description? <laughs> Probably I've met not about many. four or five, honestly. <laughs> I, I met a handful and I, I, like, I reached out to the other ones that uh, some of them I kind of already knew from crossing paths and other locations. There's there's a handful of people out there that this similar, you know, director of remote or head of remote or something like that. And that they have a similar just job description. And it's so fun to talk to them and hear kind of how they're inventing this this new role. But it's it's a little trendy right now. And uh, and it's 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 been a lot of fun. 
Yeah. And it's just going to keep growing because, I mean, right now with everything that's been happening in the world, we were all forced. Everyone was kind of forced into this working from home remote lifestyle. But I think a lot and will not think I know a lot of people have gotten a taste of it and maybe before they were a little scared. And now everyone's like, how can I do this full time? How can I make this part of my life um, fully? And now there's... People like Chase who, you know, make sure that it is working well. And it's so interesting that you have a job that allows you to help people do this. <laughs> it's a it's a dream, really, because like I like I said earlier, I kind of alluded to this, like I and I imagine you you can relate like early on and it's it's been twelve years. My career so far spans twelve years and I've always worked remotely, but I always felt that I had to make sacrifices to work remotely. And so, you know, for instance, like just coming out of school, uh, passing on better paying jobs that would have required me to go live in a city and um, go to a major office, but other jobs which were semi remote and, you know, maybe didn't pay quite as well or weren't as prestigious, but they would allow the flexibility. And, and so that, you know, at several stages throughout my career, it always felt like, oh, I got to make these sacrifices just to be able to do the same job just from wherever I want. And, and I hate to think that, you know, that I I never made sense to me. And I, I love the thought that maybe I can contribute to, you know, the people behind me not having to make those sacrifices. Um, because I don't, I think it's silly. I just, we can, we can, we have the capability to work from where we want right now. So there's no need to, for most of us to have to make that sacrifice. Yeah, that's really true. And also, you know, like I mentioned before, you're not prepared for this. You're not taught in school for this. And I hope that this is becoming the the normal now, remote work, that they really prepare more people, you know, in school for this type of lifestyle. But yeah, most that's of the time a, that's another don't. piece of, of what we're doing. And we have a whole blog portion of our blog set dedicated to this, but it's a lot around like remote work education, you know, how to be a great remote worker, how to, as an organization, how to set up good remote work best practices, how to stand out as an applicant for prospective jobs. And so we want to help educate on this. Like we've, you know, we've learned a lot over 10 years of being a fully remote organization. So we're all about just trying to pay it forward and and share that knowledge. So yeah, that education bit is super important because like you said, we don't, we don't get taught that. So you have to, it has to be found somewhere. I'm sure a lot of our listeners are thinking about this because you describe the company that you're working for, where you have all of this freedom, right? That they're not really on your backs, making sure that you're doing what you need to do as long as you're doing it. And now we're all excited for this company. How can somebody actually apply for a job there or at least find a similar company or, you know, for a position? And what are they looking for? Yeah, it's a great question. So the the very cool thing for anybody really wanting remote work right now and and even more so like location independence because I think these two things are growing um, at a similar trajectory uh, is there's tons of jobs co- going that route. Like like four, three years ago, pre-COVID, you know, they were still very limited. Um, now there's tons of job boards that are being dedicated just to remote work, even like more niche within remote work, like just for developers or just not for developers or <laughs> just in this language or that language or outside the U.S. or inside the U.S. So there's like really tailor-made options for you. And some of the best ones for people looking for remote work that I would uh, suggest looking at are weworkremotely.com, remotive.io, remotive. Uh, .io and uh, Flex Jobs are are three of the the ones that I generally recommend people go to to find their remote work options at our company. We are currently hiring doist.com, d o i s t.com slash jobs. You'll see a few openings there, but there's just so many great opportunities arising. Like you said, like my my role didn't exist not that long ago, <laughs> and and I remember when I found the company that I work for now, and I found the job uh, that I initially came to work here for, it was on like a Pinterest board of like 75 (laughs) jobs that, uh, 75 companies that are hiring remote workers to work from anywhere. And only two of them were not developer jobs. And Mm. I, and I reached out to one of them, which is the company, which was Doist. And I ended up coming to work here, but anyway, it's just, there's so many options now. And, and what those teams are looking for generally, like painting some broad strokes. They really want great communicators 
in a virtual setting. So that means like the written word. So those people who put a lot of emphasis on their verbal skills, uh, you and I, obviously we're both podcast hosts. We like to <laughs> talk to people. So this, uh, this might sound a little bit detrimental to some people, but it doesn't have to be. It's just the, the point is, is to really refocus on your written skills. Um, you're going to do most of your communication asynchronously, meaning like in the written form. And so really hone in on how you write, being very succinct, but thorough. We screen applicants very heavily, more so based on their initial application and how they're writing, more so than the, the content or the, the skills portrayed in their, in their resume or CV. So like being a really good written communicator, showing that you're you know, on your, you can manage your own work without having somebody overlooking your shoulder, that you're kind of a go-getter and a self-starter because we can't look over your shoulder, literally. <laughs> we're on <laughs> opposite sides of the world. These are a couple of the things that we're really looking for even before getting to your skills. Mm. That is so valuable to to learn because not many people will probably think about that, right? They're like, well, I did this and then that. But it, even if you had some success with your other jobs, but they weren't remote, it's a completely different beast if you're not there to f- be face to face with someone. But the the great thing is you can always, you know, improve on your skills. You can always improve in your written skills, your verbal skills. So if you just keep at it, I'm pretty sure that you'll you'll get there if you feel a little nervous right now, you know, you're not confident in something. But there's so many opportunities out there, like you said, Chase, that there's gonna be something out there for for everyone. There are, yeah. For all skill sets, it seems there's there's positions available. And there's also like even like remote work schools emerging. Um, There's a great one called Remote Dash How that I teach some classes for. I mean, they literally will walk you through, like if you have no experience in any given field and also no remote work experience, they'll make you seem (laughs) like a pro uh, in in a couple of weeks. And so anyway, it's just there, these, these kind of things are, are popping up to serve this need and this desire for remote work. So Again, I'm a I'm a nerd for this stuff. So yeah, <laughs> I, can, I know. I keep talking about it. I'm like, that's why I'm like, tell us more, Chase. Tell us more because <laughs> this for me, I'm really interested in it because I'm like, what is it like out there? How do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I love that these courses are emerging. Like, like literally, people walking you through the the tools that teams are using and the and what you know what the companies want to hear how to implement best practices and and give yourself a routine, even just down to like creating a workspace for yourself. But, you know, I mean, I, I worked for a couple years remotely without ever having any dedicated workspace. Like I was some days on the couch, some days in my bed, yeah. some days at a coffee shop. And that was totally inefficient. It, yeah. it didn't make any sense. Um, <laughs> but like, so even getting down to the real basics and kind of starting from, from the, those, you know, from the building blocks can be really useful. Oh my God. Can I just tell you, I know exactly how that is because we were moving, right? Because um, we were moving our, our place and I was completely inefficient. I was, like you said, I was on my couch, on a dining table, on my bed. And now that we're like a you know, more settled with our space here, I actually have an office and I work so much more efficiently. I work better hours. I'm like, oh my God, I didn't realize how that was not good for my productivity at all until (laughs) I had an, I like, I have an office now and I'm like, there's such a huge, it's like a night and day difference. It's so crazy. (laughs) It is. It seems, it seems obvious in retrospect, but it's never obvious up front. Uh, We, we think, we, we think we're a lot better. I think we think we're a lot more productive and a lot more, uh, a lot better multitaskers than we actually tend to be. Um, like, like this is probably true for most people. So if we kind of like protect ourselves from ourselves by giving ourselves a good environment, <laughs> then we can, we can take that away from ourselves. Yeah. We have to protect ourselves from ourselves. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is awesome. So now I want to talk about your life now because you're in Europe and you also travel around in a camper van when you're not like in your your base. So how is that like? How is it like traveling throughout Europe? Were you able to do that during the pandemic or did you have to find a base? 
Yeah. So we came, my wife and I came to Spain, uh, like almost four years ago on a one year visa, um, and expected to just stay for one year. And we, and we thought we would just move every three months or so. We thought we'd, we thought we'd continue digital nomading. Like we'd just bounce around, check out a couple different parts of Spain that we hadn't seen before and, uh, learn some Spanish and then move on to our next place. But we got to Valencia and really partially like, we're kind of like, wow, we're in love with this place. And Mm -hmm. also this would actually make a great home base. Like we've been looking for that and we don't really want to keep moving around with the dog and everything. Like maybe let's try staying here for the whole year and we'll just do some trips from here. So that's kind of how it, how our life here started. And then we just kept renewing our visa and it really has started to feel like home. Like it's the longest either of us have been anywhere since we were 18 years old and after leaving for college. So it's really become like a little bit of home here in, in Valencia. And we, we uh, decided to buy a camper van to just be able to see more of the... We'd seen a lot of the cities in Europe and we wanted to experience some of those like second tier, third tier towns in the countryside and the national parks and in the mountains and, and things like that. So that's kind of what led to finally getting the camper van. Yeah, during the pandemic, we, we couldn't travel. Uh, we were confined, very confined here in Spain, sometimes to your apartment, sometimes to your city, sometimes to the province and then for a lot of the time just to Spain but we've seen a lot of Spain now (laughs) that's that's for sure (laughs) so we try to keep it to like eight months more or less in home here and uh, about four months on the road kind of scattered throughout the year maybe one month in one place and then come back and stay for two or three months and then go go on another journey after that it's nice that you have that yeah, routine, you know, even though it seems a little erratic a bit, but you figure that out after years and years of traveling and doing this. And I also find that a lot of digital nomads, they end up finding their home base because of how much they travel, because you do see a lot of different places. And there's, you know, there's something about a place that just feels like home and you know you want to be there, you know, and you don't want to leave. And that's one of the best things about this type of lifestyle is you do have that option and um, freedom to go out there and really find your true home where it feels like it for you. So that's nice that you guys have found that in Spain. And it's really interesting, Chase, because I've spoken to a lot of different people and I think I know a lot of them that have decided Spain was it for them. So I don't know. There's something about that country that people really love. (laughs) It's something in the sangria, I guess. (laughs) It's a a really cool place. I, I, I have to say like, you know, something that I, one thing that really has, that I've fallen in love with about Spain is that it's a relatively small country as for somebody coming from the U.S., for instance, but like within the country, I mean, there's five official languages. Literally, you can change provinces and literally people like mainly speak the other language. The road signs are in other <laughs> languages. There's the Pyrenees Mountains. There's three different oh, seas yeah. that border, border the country. You border two different countries, France and Portugal, that you can get to in a couple of hours. So like for someone that craves a lot of variety, uh, I have that at my fingertips super easy. And then with Valencia, you're also in like a major international city that that sort of doesn't feel like a major city, but it has the airport that you can hop off to the rest of Europe on really cheap direct flights to all over the place. So it it really was like you said, like we we're sort of just like stumbled upon this, and we're like, whoa, uh, maybe we <laughs> found a home here and we on accident. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that that's how you came by this place just by figuring things out and just exploring. And I do have to agree with you. The Pyrenees is probably one of the most beautiful places that I've been to. And um, it's funny because this was maybe like eight years ago or nine years, maybe even 10 years ago. One of my friends, she's um, she's from England, she's English, and she used to travel a lot. And she would show me pictures of the places that she's gone to. And then one of the places that she went to was in the Pyrenees Mountains. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to go there. <laughs> so I, I dragged my husband, my boyfriend at that time. I'm like, we're going to wherever this spot is. (laughs) And (laughs) we didn't know where it was. My friend forgot where it was. And we just ended up stumbling. Yeah, like we just went to the Pyrenees Mountain. We were driving a car and then we just stopped off because there's just so many different spots there that are just so beautiful. And it was funny because we just found this trail and then it took us like 
it led us to this abandoned village that was from like the 17th or 16th century. It was crazy. I'm like, I don't think I'll ever find that place again. But I'm like, wow, you're definitely (laughs) in the right place. (laughs) Oh, that's amazing. I, I love to hear that people have had that experience too, because I think when people think of Spain, they think of flamenco and paella yeah. and and bullfighting and and like sort of what is the south of spain which is amazing mm-hmm. too and all all really really fun but the pyrenees get overlooked a little bit and they're just yeah. super majestic and like you said i mean the feel there's tons of little stone villages and their own languages and culture up there and it, it's really really special place yeah it definitely is it there's something about places like these, right? That it just doesn't seem real. It kind of looks like a movie set in a way. And then when you stand there and there's literally nobody there for you and maybe your wife, Chase, you're probably like, is this even real? Like, how <laughs> how is this real? <laughs> that I resonate exactly with what you're saying. I, I think I've said that like a hundred times. Like, are, is this real? Like, can I touch it? <laughs> <laughs> It's like, is this the Truman Show? Is yeah, this like yeah. built in? Where are we? <laughs> That's it. Exactly. <laughs> love that. Oh, but that is amazing. I love that you find those little spots and, you know, surprises, bits of surprises when you're on the road. That's pretty incredible. So, so Chase, I do have a question for you, right? Yes, so please. let's fast forward to about 30 to 50 years from now and you're looking back at your life what legacy would you like to leave and what do you want to be remembered for well that's a wonderful question um i i i've mentioned this already like i really am passionate about what i would define as like the future of work and i feel very fortunate to be working for a company that happened to be a pioneer in this area already and I happen to be able to land in this position to help lead that charge to make the future of work more the present and more the reality. And it is already becoming that partly because of the pandemic, but also just because of other companies much bigger than ours and much, much uh, more prevalent in this space than ours and and some that are coming behind us that are smaller um, and, and pushing it along as well. But just basically pushing this future of work to to become the present. I would love to play a, a hefty role in in doing so and give people the freedom of location independence, open up opportunities around for great jobs around the world to to people from all over and, and see what environmental impacts can come from that. And I just think there's so many positives um, as, apart from just being the personal well-being and the personal work-life balance and freedom of choice that a lot of us can have. But just on a more macro global scale, there's there's so much that can come from this. So I want to play a hefty role in that. And I, and I hope that in 20 or 30 years, I'll be able to look back and, and say that I did that. Yeah. And I can't even imagine what it's going to become, right? Because we see things coming into shape right now and what we're finding as remote workers. So I can't even imagine what's going to happen 30 to 50 years from now, what you know people are going to be able to do and what's going to be possible because of this newfound freedom that we are able to have, what the family dynamics are going to be, you know, how people travel, how people people go and move to different countries and how diverse it may even become. Um, And also how it can help a lot of developing countries because now you, you can really work at any time at any place. So there's so much possibilities and it's so amazing that you're, you're doing this and you're one of the, uh, the pioneers of, of this movement, right? (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm very, I'm very happy to be in that, uh, in that conversation and just get to get to kind of focus on that day to day because yeah, I mean, I literally have like seen, you know, people's lives be completely changed just by being able to get a job as a freelancer and, and, you know, go from literally poverty to, to living super comfortably. And just because they were able to get uh, a freelancing job, you know, making five bucks on Fiverr. So this, this kind of thing is real. And, it, and on a, on a, at scale, like when you scale it across the world, it can really be a game changer. So um, I know a lot of us will take it for granted. We've been working for lap from laptops and coffee shops and stuff for a long time, but um, it, it could be revolutionary if it's done at scale. 
Now, Chase, one of the things that you mentioned, and I know I I talk about it a lot, is you travel with your dog and your Mm -hmm. wife, and you guys have traveled to a lot of different places, different countries, different cities. You're originally an American. You've traveled in Asia and Europe. Do you have a specific travel insurance that you guys use when you're out and about and traveling the world? Yeah, so specifically... A couple of resources I would love to mention here. One is Insured Nomads, which you can find insuredNomads.com. They're full disclaimer. They're the sponsor of my podcast, but that is for a reason uh, because (laughs) I actually do love their product. Um, So they provide health and medical and travel insurance for the whole family, for digital nomads, expats, uh, you know, you name it. If anybody that's kind of outside their, their borders. So we leverage them. And then another one for prospective pet travelers is pettravel.com. When you're having to change, they have a lot of services, but when you're having to change countries, there's tons of customs forms and and rules about which shot needs to be given when and what paper you need. And they sell these individual packets for like 10 bucks or 15 bucks for each individual country that are so useful. So I always just, whenever we're going to a new country with the dog, I just buy one of those and it it spells it all out for me really nicely. Um, So I would highly recommend those two. That is awesome. I love that you mentioned pet insurance because I don't think we've ever covered pet insurance before (laughs) for traveling. So yeah, I love that. And it's so crazy, right? Because as remote workers, there's so many things that can happen. Um, It's, you know, I I say this all the time, the pandemic, nobody knew that was going to happen. And there was a lot of people that were stuck in places. Maybe things happened. Maybe they got covid and you're stuck. You don't know. And there were a lot of insurance companies that actually didn't cover it because it wasn't in in their um, coverage. So there's a lot of things that, that you really don't know. And if your insurance company doesn't cover that, then you're kind of screwed in a way when it comes to, to your health insurance. That's why I'm really glad that I found Integra Global. And they have a ton of comprehensive plans. They don't ask their members to build one because how do we know what we're need we're gonna need, right? Uh, their insurance covers it all, and everything is built in. So if you want to learn more, you can definitely check out integraglobal.com and see how they can give you the coverage you need, and maybe some you never knew you would. They're pretty incredible. I've been working with them for several years now, and they're one of the only insurance companies that actually covered people during the whole fiasco of. Of, uh, the pandemic. So they're definitely a company that could be trusted. But thank you so much, Chase, for giving us all of the information that you gave us today. We really appreciate it. Um, there are so much gems. <laughs> and I'm like <laughs> learning so much from you with everything that you gave us today, especially what it's like transitioning from, you know, all of these different types of lifestyles that you've had. So we really appreciate you being here. So if our listeners Listeners want to know more about you. Where can they find you? Yeah, well, you're you're welcome, Debbie, and thank you for having me. I've uh, been listening to the podcast uh, off and on for a, lo- a while now, so it's really cool to to be here, and uh, <laughs> I, I appreciate you having me on the show. People can find me that there are two different ways. Mainly, if you want to connect professionally about remote work stuff and things like that. Uh, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. And recently, uh, I'm a rekindled Twitter user trying to share more information about remote work in in that space. So you can find me at DC Warrington, W-A-R-R-I-N-G-T-O-N on Twitter or on LinkedIn. And uh, I also I have a podcast where I talk a lot about life abroad, living more like expat style in different countries around the world. I interview people that are doing that and living similar lives and also a lot of remote work experts. So aboutabroad.com is the website there. And you can, if you're interested in kind of more expat life, um, that's kind of the other side of my day to day, you can you can contact me there. Love it. Thank you so much, Chase, for being here. We really appreciate you. And yeah, finally, we get to to talk to each other and <laughs> I get to share your journey. It's It's been really amazing. Thank you again. Thank you, Debbie. I hope you enjoyed this interview with Chase. Make sure to visit theoffbeatlife.com. Again, that's theoffbeatlife.com to get the extended interview where he shares how to navigate the right lifestyle as a remote worker. Hey friend, have you been wanting to start a podcast? 
I know it can be overwhelming in the beginning. Believe me, I have been there. Lucky for you, we have created a new site called howtocreatepodcast.com that shares a ton of freebies that can help you get started. From launching, growing, to monetizing, we share it all in one place. Visit howtocreatepodcast.com for more information. Hey listeners, thank you for listening to this episode and I'm so thankful for your support. I would love to hear your thoughts on this episode and get suggestions on guests, topics we can discuss, and so much more. Feel free to reach out at hello at theoffbeatlife.com and let me know what you'd like to hear. If you like the show, don't forget to give us some love and review on iTunes. Thank you again for being a part of this journey and I can't wait to hear how your location independent story will unfold.